Thanks for our opportunity to kind of update on a few topics. All right, the um, um, one question I've gotten asked more than anything else in the last month or so is about herbicide shortage. Uh, and, and so I want to kind of spend my time kind of touching on this as it relates to, to corn and some of the things that uh, might be going on, some of the things to think about um, as, we, as we move uh, into the spring and think about our, our herbicide programs for this coming year. Um, so uh, one of the things, regardless of what we do as far as weed management, we always want to make sure we start clean, that we don't, that we, we're starting into a clean seed bed. So key word for this presentation is going to be start clean. Okay, so it's two words, certain be plural, but it's, we won't get into that. All right. So uh, I'm sure anyone that's, that's uh, been involved in agriculture has heard about uh, um, the, the impending shortages or expected shortages, I guess might be the better term, where both glyphosate and glufosinate. Uh, these are the active ingredients. Uh, glyphosate's the active ingredient in, in Roundup, as well as a number of prepackaged or uh, uh, other products. Um, you know, all kind of rolled into the term uh, Roundup. And glufosinate is the active ingredient in Liberty, in Scout, in Interline. Um, and uh, the, the shortages that uh, we've been hearing about are not just for the main brands, but it's for all brands that uh, there's uh, concern that, that uh, um, just not going to be as much as they've had in years past. Um, also, this doesn't just in, uh, apply to single active ingredients, but it also includes all premixes. So, for instance, uh, glyphosate is in a number of premixes, such as uh, Halix GT and Acuron GT. It's a uh, 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 Flexstar GT. There's glyphosate in these products. So, if it's going to be short for the single active ingredient, there's there's chances are that these prepackaged uh, products might also be short. Uh, glufosinate, um, it's another one that uh, there's, there's a couple of products out there uh, with glufosinate um, plus another active ingredient, and, and it, they might be short as well. I get asked a lot about shortages. I have no insight into any of this. This is just what I've gleaned from a, a number of sources and, and conversations with, with folks, but uh, one of them is the Hurricane Ida that struck Cal uh, Texas um, that, that took the uh, um, glyphosate um, plant offline and it's taken a while to, to recover from that. Uh, there's just overall transportation and shipping challenges, you know, um, moving the, the technical material uh, to the formulation plants and then moving the formulated products out to the retailers. Uh, there's just with, with the overall demand on, on shipping and, and the challenges and issues associated with it, it uh, um, has slowed up the, the process. Uh, there's also lack of, of packaging materials for some of these, particularly as you get into um, you know, the, the, the smaller size containers, the two and a half uh, gallon jugs or, or products that are in the pound sizes, those require more packaging. And so that puts an extra strain on that. Not only is there pro problems with moving the technical materials around, but also the inerts. These are the products that go into the, the uh, blended with the, the active ingredient to make it more stable, make it perform better in the environment. Um, you know, lack of those materials as well has uh, uh, delayed production and impacted production. So uh, as I mentioned, it seems that, uh, that products that uh, may not be quite as readily available in smaller units as they would be in uh, uh, the um, bulk units. And as folks start looking for alternatives, uh, these other products may also be, um, there might be a squeeze on them as well. So shifting from um, glyphosate to uh, another product for post-emergence uh, applications in corn, they put more stretch uh, 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 demand on these, these alternative products. They may 
um, ultimately become uh, less available. And then, you know, all this is, uh, has, has uh, driven up the cost of production. Um, and, and certainly the, the shipping costs have, have increased. And as a result, that's being passed on to, the, to, to, to farmers. And so the overall cost of a lot of these products um, is, is, is going to be increasing or expected to be higher for this coming season. So what, what does all this mean? You know, as we, as you think about your herbicide programs and think about what, uh, what you're gonna use, where you're gonna use it, how you're gonna use it, um, you know, cost is gonna go up. We may not have some of the, the, the products that we want, or we may not have as much of it as what we want. And so, you know, we need to, it, it becomes a, a, a balancing act and, and you know, there's, there's usually like three choices that we're looking for. We want a maximum effectiveness. We want to make sure we get the best level of weed control that we can. We want to do it uh, um, inexpensively or at the least cost that we, we can. And we want to make it easy on ourselves. Uh, you know, we don't want to have to overthink a lot of this. We don't want to have to make three or four passes across the field. We don't want to have to worry about putting three or four different containers in the, in the spray tank. We just don't want a single one. And the problem is, is, is trying to come up with that uh, happy medium that we can achieve all three. And in reality, what we're often looking at is two of the three. You know, we can, it, uh, it's, 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 hard, it's hard to come up with scenarios where we can uh, reach all three you know, to, to everyone's satisfaction, particularly as, as, costs, as, costs, as costs start to, to increase. So keep that in mind that, uh, you know, we've got to be realistic about what our choices are and, and what the outcome of some of this might be. All this puts more of an information or more of a demand on, on information, making sure we're as informed about our decisions as possible. And uh, two, well, there, there's some publications out there that myself and colleagues in the Mid-Atlantic uh, Mid region have worked on um, um, where we put this information together in, in, in one manual. And uh, there are two, two publications out there related to weed management that have the same weed, weed, weed management information included. Um, one is the, the Penn State Agronomy Guide and the other is the pest management guide down at Virginia Tech. Uh, the, as I mentioned, the weed scientists, we get together at least once a year to kind of uh, update our, our recommendations and, and update these guides. But it, the, it's the same information just put into two different publications. The, the Penn State guide um, um, is, is available through, obviously, through, through Penn State. Um, their weed science is, is embedded in their agronomy guide. Um, that is where the, the more comprehensive information is. <clears throat> this past year, we put together a, a little bit shorter one that would be a little, um, little less uh, costly, a little cheaper, uh, but it doesn't have quite as much information in it. But if you're looking for the full, uh, all the information for uh, corn, soybeans, sorghum, small grains, it's in the, the Penn State Agronomy Guide. The Virginia Tech publication, which I said is the exact same information, it's available uh, uh, as a digital version, um, PDF, um, and that is free. And so the website for that is here at uh, the um, uh, Virginia Tech Publication Office, uh, or if you just um, want to Google, uh, uh, Virginia Cooperative Extension Publications 456-016, and, and this publication will come up. Again, it's this, this is the free version if you're looking for it. You know, I, I, I think there, there, there's a, a perception that um, with this glyphosate shortage and, uh, and glufosinate shortage, um, is that there may not be uh, that 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 uh, there may not be any of these products available for us, and and that's not the case. What what I'm hearing is is that they'll be down inventory by about seventy to to eighty percent of what they normally have. So 
it's not like these products are going to be uh, aren't going to be available. There just won't be as much uh, available. And so I, I went back and, and looked at some of our extension publications over the years and, and what's changed, uh, say, since since the Roundup Ready corn or Liberty Link corn has come out. You know, and you think about it, if, yeah, well, if you look at what what has uh, left the marketplace, we're really dealing with with not a lot has changed since the Roundup Ready corn uh, was, was on the market. Um, we have added the group 27 herbicides over the last uh, 25 years, um, this being the uh, um, all the Callisto or Mesotrione products, um, Impact, Laudis, Shieldex, they've come on the market. Um, Round or Liberty Link sweet corn or Liberty Link corns come on the market. Um, the uh, Zidua, the, the uh, um, AIM Cadet, uh, Sharpen, those are really the major products that have come on the market in the last 25 years. So we're, we, we, we still, point is, is that we still have a lot of tools out there that we can use uh, to, to substitute for glyphosate or uh, glufosinate. And in this 25 years, there's very few things that we've lost. I mean, we've, yes, we, we no longer have eradicane and, and sutan and, you know, that didn't really put anyone out of corn growing business. Um, so we haven't really lost anything um, that, that's been in our toolbox, in our chemical toolbox over the last 25 years. So kind of a, an approach I would recommend thinking about if glyphosate is going to be in short supply. Um, first of all, prioritizing your most difficult fields. Where is it going to maximize your, your investment? And that's you know, we've used glyphosate because it's highly effective. It controls a number of different species, um, gives us a little bit wider window of application than some of these, these, these other products. So prioritizing by putting it, using it, reserving it for those difficult fields, fields that are um, hard to get to and a timely basis uh, that, uh, you know, will often need a post-emergence herbicide um, and, and may need to apply them, you know, to very small and sus more susceptible species. You know, th those might be some of the fields that are far and hard to get to. Those might be the ones you want to prioritize uh, that you have glyphosate on them. Um, because of the highly effectiveness of glyphosate too, thinking about putting it into, using it on fields that you can be rotating to vegetables that you can maintain them as clean as possible. I mean, our work and a lot of experience in the areas from a no-till standpoint, um, you know, we, we, we've got Paraquat, we use Paraquat a lot for our burn down um, in corn and it's highly effective in there. So if you can uh, use Paraquat in those uh, situations, um, you know, if, if you're in a situation for whatever reasons you're not using Paraquat, um, <clears throat> having glyphosate as part of the burn down in corn, I think I think it probably has more value in corn as a burn down herbicide than post emergence because of the number of options that we have available um, post emergence. I think too, if we're looking at uh, overall shortage, um, uh, that that uh, uh, glyphosate is is a more valuable product for soybeans than it is for corn. Again, because we do have a lot of effective products available in corn. The other thing I want to mention is, you know, I think over the last uh, five or six years, you know, as many products of glyphosate have come on the market, price of glyphosate has, has been relatively low. Um, we haven't really paid too much attention to our use rate. Uh, that uh, it's just become kind of a common uh, thought that we need 32 ounces of, of glyphosate. And uh, regardless of the size of the weeds, that's the, the rate we've been running with. But if you look at the label and certainly, you know, a lot of our experiences with it, if you're um, applying fall panicum at, uh, or, or velvet leaf, say at 12 inches tall, yes, label and, and uh, control is better with a, a full quarter, 32 ounces. But if you're applying that uh, um, glyphosate at smaller, the smaller weeds, um, you know, we can use lower rates. It's labeled for lower rates. And so, Paying attention to weed size and the rate will help to stretch 
that glyphosate uh, over more acres. You know, I had mentioned that glyphosate's um, probably a more effective or, or more valuable tool in, in soybeans. And, and I say that because, you know, corn's planted earlier in most cases. Um, it's during the part of the year where, where weeds aren't growing quite as fast. So we do have a little bit wider window of application than, say, soybeans that are planted a little bit later. And this, this is just a, a graph that illustrates that with, with Palmer amaranth. This is the height of Palmer amaranth four weeks after planting uh, when the field was, was uh, um, um, planted either on April 5th, May 12th, or June 12th. And you can see as we move to those later dates, the, the over a four week period, that Palmer amaranth is getting much taller. So it's a much faster uh, growth rate as we move into the uh, later part of the spring and into early summer. Uh, which coincides with oftentimes with our soybean planting. So soybeans, I think, uh, is, is one of my one of the reasons why I think it's more value in, in soybeans than it is in corn. Also mentioned looking at uh, um, uh, you know timing of application. We've gotten used to you know using glyphosate at, at you know, full labeled rates. It has a, a wide rate range, um, but using relying on that 32 fluid ounces for, for most products. Um, yeah, so we can control larger wheat. But, uh, you know, we have limited supply. We're trying to stretch it, uh, applying it while those weeds are um, smaller and more susceptible. You know, if we move to alternative products uh, in, in place of Roundup, things like uh, um, Dicamba or Callisto or Accent, you can see that the, the optimum time for spraying them is while weeds are, are much smaller than say when we're using a full rate of glyphosate. So timeliness is gonna be uh, very important um, if we're using alternatives to glyphosate. The other thing, you know, is, is we talk about glyphosate and, and, and its rate, what is the optimum rate for it? And you know, in this, this kind of, habit we've gotten into of just lumping everything as 32 uh, ounces as, as a use rate. Um, you know, again, if we're trying to stretch it um, and, and make it go further, you know, using the, 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 the best rate. Um, and uh, that varies from product to product based on its concentration. So this is uh, the newest formulation of uh, Roundup PowerMax. It's uh, PowerMax 3. Um, it is a uh, um, formulated as as a, uh, as a potassium salt, so it has uh, five point eight pounds of glyphosate in it. But um, but glyphosate as a potassium salt, the actual glyphosate acid, that active in, uh, acid equivalent that's actually given us the weed control, is at four point eight pounds per per gallon. So um, looking at what formulation of glyphosate we're looking at uh, or what formulation of glyphosate we have and applying the, the right acid equivalent um, is, is important. This table looks at uh, uh, just some different examples and these are only thrown up as, as examples of different uh, glyphosate products. Um, we've got the two formulations of, of PowerMax, uh, Glystar 5 Extra, Durango and Mikazi. You know, these, these are, um, all of these contain glyphosate acid, but to stabilize that acid, it's formulated as a salt. And there's three different salts represented here. Uh, the potassium salt for the uh, top two, um, isopropyl amine salt or um, dimethyl amine salt. And that salt in combination with the acid um, gives us the active ingredient, but those salts all weigh, have a slightly different weight to it. So what we really want to do is compare acid equivalent um, across these products. So if we're looking at these products and we want to spray the equivalent of 1.3 pounds acid equivalent, that gives us the 30 ounces of the PowerMax 3. It's the quart rate of the PowerMax um, formulation. 
36 ounces of both the Glystar and the Durango. But uh, for the Mikazi, that's 48 uh, um, ounces. So, you know, using one rate across all these different products tells us we're, we're, we're using a wide range of, of acid equivalents. So making sure that we're using the proper amount of product, trying to stretch uh, glyphosate um, across as many acres as we can is really important. One of the values of glyphosate in, in, in corn is um, because of it providing uh, both broadleaf and grass control. And uh, sometimes we struggle with alternatives for, for grass control. I just want to remind you know, we do have a couple of products. We have three here or four here that, that can provide us very good uh, grass control. You know, Accent Q was certainly a, a standard product that we used for a number of years before Roundup Ready corn became on the market. And then since Roundup Ready corns come out, you know, we've got the, the group 27s, the impact in Amazon or Laudis. Um, and uh, all of these products uh, provide good grass control, um, assuming that the grass is, is three, no more than three inches tall. Um, the one caveat I will mention is that Laudis is weak on, on fall panic. So as we look at alternatives too, we got to make sure that uh, we're using the right adjuvants with these. Uh, um, we, we've got the optimum um, droplet size through nozzle selection, um, using the right spray volume, and aware of any antagonisms that we might see with, with tank mixes. Again, um, this information is available in our regional guides as a one place. And, and of course, all this information is on the label. And uh, it's going to be important that uh, we review all of these labels before we go to the field this year. If, if anyone's got some, some Liberty Links uh, um, um, corn, they want to use Liberty um, and kind of make their own uh, Halix version uh, for Liberty Link corn, I will put out uh, one word of caution on this is that uh, um, we have seen some issues in the past where um, folks have done this uh, using Liberty, a uh, formulation of Dual, um, uh, and, and a formulation of, of Mesotrione. Um, if we get our Dual rate uh, too high, more than a pint, we sometimes can see some injury with that. Um, we got to be careful about our, uh, our uh, adjuvants when we do this. You know, if you look at the Lumax, Lexar labels, um, you know, on Liberty Link corn, they do not use crop oil or non surfactant uh, methylate seed oil or UAN um, uh, because of uh, potential injury. Um, and while there's, there's a, you know, we, we often think of mesotrione as being a Callisto product, there's a lot of manufacturers making uh, different formulations of this. And not all uh, formulations behave the same. So making sure that if, as you start to look at tank mixing, uh, products with, with mesotrione that, that uh, um, the manufacturers um, can verify that these, uh, by their labels, that these tank mixes are allowed and don't have any issues. So looking at our effectiveness in corn, um, moving forward, you're making sure that we use our post applications in a timely fashion, you know, without, uh, if, if fields that may not have the opportunity to be sprayed with glyphosate, it means that we spray weeds while they're small, uh, making sure that corn, we've got good agronomics there, so we get a good crop canopy. And, you know, we, we in many cases, we'll want to be using products that might be, uh, have, have glyphos or uh, um, atrazine in them that we go out on 12-inch on corn, is our, which, limit, which is our limit on, on height of corn with atrazine applications. Then we use the right product for the weeds that we've got. Um, so use, using uh, our recommendation guides on relative effectiveness of different products, um, we apply them at the, the right rate and we apply them at the right time. Again, and, and using as many integrated strategies as we can, um, rotating crops, using good, good crop uh, genetics and agronomic practices for, for uh, a crop canopy. And that, uh, you know, come end of season, we, we prevent weed seeds um, production and, and don't spread weed seeds from field to field. Um, 
Some more information on integrated strategies is, is available here at the growiwm.org website. Got a lot of information there that uh, um, uh, to, to, to help with, with uh, developing more integrated strategies. So with that, we have any time for questions?